Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to attempt to explore some of the differences, the pros and cons of procedural versus more functional or imperative versus more declarative uh, programming paradigms in solving the same problem. First, we'll solve it in a more imperative style, which I may slightly exaggerate just to you know, cover my bases. And then we will iterate over the solution, moving towards what I would consider a more declarative functional style. So first of all, what is the problem that we're going to solve? Uh, looking at the file, uh, basically I have required an underscore because we'll be using a couple of those functions in this problem. And then I have an input array. And the input is just an array of strings, as you can see here, where the string format is ID, hyphen, and then the name. And that'll make a bit more sense in a second. You can think of these as key value pairs, where there's a, there's a key, which is the ID, and then the value, which is the name. Uh, the result is just what we're going to console log, so we can actually see what we're outputting. And this is the first instance of an underscore function. And the underscore function object takes an array of pairs and then converts that array of pairs into key values on an object. So what we have here is a function called make pairs that takes this input, splits it into an array and splits it into an array of key values instead of an array of strings, and then that gets passed into object and we end up with an object with these as key value pairs on the object. So if I run this, we see we have the key one with the value Spencer and the key two with the value Jamie. So we have IDs and names. And now just to look at the implementation very quickly, we have this make pairs function and it just takes an array of strings and returns an array of pairs of strings. And those are our keys and our values. And split string is just the transformation function that gets passed into map so that I didn't have to write this all in one function and it could be split out uh, easier to read. And it just takes the string that's currently being, that's currently um, at that location in, or that index in the array input array and splits it into an a pair of ID and value. And now the problem that we need to solve here is what if someone has a hyphenated name? So if we imagine we were going to have somebody named like Jesse Ann, then we would end up with a, a situation where when we try to return a pair, we will actually have three elements in this array and the third one will get dropped. So if we run this, we now have an index of, th or a um, key of three, but the value is only Jesse instead of Jesse hyphen Ann. And so let's start working on a solution. We'll start with a, more imperative style. And one way you might solve this, this is not the be all end all, but one way you could solve it is by creating a variable called split string. And then doing an if, and the condition will be if this has a length of three instead of two. So this is our, excuse me, this is our edge case. So split string dot length equals three. Sorry, I'll try to make some, and my linter's not gonna like this, but it'll be far easier to read if I push it down a little bit. So if we have a length of three, then we need to return something different than our default. So our default value down here might just be returning split string because that's what we were returning before. We were just returning string dot split with that passed in. We've assigned that value to split string so we can just return that. But if we have our edge case where instead of two items we have three, then we need to return something different. And that will be a pair and in JavaScript you have to use the array syntax to create pairs because there's not a s different tuple syntax, uh, and we'll grab the first element, that will be our key, and then we need to join the other two. Oh, dang, it's not called split, it's called split string. And then we need to grab the other two. So we'll have uh, the second, we'll join that with a dash, and then split string, the third element, and we'll close that. And so now, 
we'll be returning a pair no matter what, but we're going to join these uh, remaining elements if there are three of them because we need to make sure that that third element doesn't get dropped. If we run this, it works just fine. And so, as I said, I may be slightly exaggerating this solution uh, to so that our iteration is much clearer, but let's start here as our base case, or our base case, our, uh, our place where we're starting as we iterate through this code. So the first thing that I would see is, well, I was going to say let's turn this into a template string, but this is actually going to drive me crazy a lot faster, uh, which is that we don't have an else, and I really don't like not having an else. I think if we have an if, we should have an else. Otherwise, why are we having an if? But then we can make this into a template string. This allows us to drop these. Oh, and I have to close that. All right, so now we haven't moved toward anything that's more declarative, but we have used a more modern syntax in the form of ES6 uh, template strings. And that still performs the same, so we haven't broken anything. Now, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you'll notice this is a pattern that I tend to replace, where we have an if block with a return, an else block with another return. That's where I would tend to think this is a good chance to use a ternary. Because ternaries can be placed with a condition after a single return statement, and then we can do it all in one statement. So we could do return, place our condition there, uh, and then onto the next line, we can do this return. Otherwise, we'll do this return. and that's still working just fine. So all we've done here is said this is going to be our condition, and under if it's true, then we will return this unique case, otherwise we return this base case, this fallback, this default return value. And at this point, I might look at it and say, what are we really doing here? Well, what we're really doing is returning the first value in the array, and then all the other values joined together with a hyphen. So maybe instead of a equals three, we could have a situation where we wanted to do anything greater than two, at which case this would break if we needed to then app manually append another hyphen to the end here with the fourth index in the array. So let's fix that. And one way we could do that is by using it here, let me just remove this. And I'll actually remove that too. So we're going to always return a pair, but we'll want to return either the first, because that's all that this is here. Remove that. The first element of split string, or the rest of the elements, and there is another underscore function for rest and split string. So now we have the first, this is like head in Haskell, if you're familiar with that. It just takes the first element of the array and returns it. And then rest, it's, I'm assuming called rest because we have the rest operator in JavaScript, uh, but this is like tail in Haskell. So it takes everything other than the head and returns that. And now all we have to do is call join. And we can join everything else that's not the first element with a dash. And this should work for absolutely everything. So there we go. We still have our Jesse Ann working properly. And let's just do a test on it. If we were to add a fourth one, and I have no idea what a multi-hyphenated name would be. So let's just say like um, Bob, Bob, Billy, or Billy Bob sounds a whole lot better than Bob Billy. Billy, Bob, uh, Shane, I don't know. Having a hard time coming up with uh, a name that sounds reasonable with that many hyphens, but let's run it and see if we get it to work right. 
There we go. Uh, and we can go any arity of hyphens and everything will work fine. But it actually gets slightly better than this because we have ES6 destructuring that we can rely on here. And we can just simply grab out the key as the first value that is returned from string.split. We can gather up all the other elements with the rest parameter. And now we have a key and a value. So instead of this, we can just return the key. And then we can return the value joined. What is it not like here? Oh, it's fine with it. OK. Oh, I'm just missing a space. That's why it's mad. And then I can run it. And we still get the exact same values. So now my argument here would be that we have moved from something that says, a solution that says what we're doing, under a certain condition, return a certain value, otherwise return this default value, and into a situation or into a solution that syntactically says what to do, where we want to split a string into a key value pair where the value is always joined by a hyphen. And that to me is extremely clear. Now, you could always argue if you are someone who would have aligned themselves more closely or uh, preferred the original solution or something similar to it, you could, have, you could argue that this is very, I don't know, abstracted away. But I would suggest to you that this is probably where th the language is really going. The fact that so much of ES6 has been in order to provide this uh, much more declarative syntax for things that we were already doing in these very verbose ways, it would indicate that there is a the trajectory of JavaScript is heading in this more declarative format. And so the more comfortable you can get with things like map, with things like destructuring, with things like head, tail, or first rest, depending on the library that you're using or if you write the function, the utility functions yourself, getting familiar with these functional paradigms and functional patterns will actually make you much more comfortable and uh, have a much better handle on the language as it moves forward. So if you liked this video, let me know. I'm planning on releasing a few videos like this because if you're anything like me, examples are really the best way of learning these things. And I would, love to have the opportunity to continue giving these sorts of examples as ways to see, I don't know, the differences between these different paradigms. And if you have any suggestions for specific uh, ex examples that you would like to see, let me know. I'd love to hear them. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Also, if you didn't really get much out of this, it would actually be really good to know that as well. Uh, some feedback on what could be done better would be uh, appreciated. So. See you in the next video, guys. Have a good one, and uh, bye.